So welcome everyone to my channel. If you have not met you before, my name is Meg and I love to share yoga and I love to share movement. So I really like to combine the two of them so that we can get our joints moving three dimensionally and in all planes of movement. With a lot of the things we do, we tend to move very linear um, and therefore we start to get ourselves very stuck and very rigid. So in my practices, especially when I'm teaching flow um, or any style of vinyasa, I really like to move it a little bit outside of the box. So my intention for you all is to have fun and to play and to explore different ways of moving your body that you may not necessarily do. So all you'll need is a mat, grab yourself a block if you have one, if not a water bottle is a great idea. And we will start ourselves today uh, in a child's pose. So bringing the knees wide, the toes touch, an opportunity and an invitation to open up the hips. And just very mindfully and gently let your head just soften down onto the floor. Notice if the shoulders have bunched up like mine have. Notice if the hips feel high and just do your best to let them feel heavy. Pay particular attention now to your breath. Breathing in a sense of calm and a sense of peace for your day and exhaling. Just give yourself permission to you know, leave any baggage behind for this 40 minutes or so. You can always pick it up at the end of the class, at the end of the practice. So in this next 10 breaths or so, I want you to really visualize and feel into how you would like your day to go from here. So I want you to breathe in an affirmation. I feel productive, I feel calm, I feel strong. Whatever resonates with you, and if you exhale, release any resistance to that, let go of the yeah buts or I don't think that's going to happen. Really state your affirmation and then feel into it like it's already happening. So just do that about eight more times. Starting to deepen the inhale. And allow yourself to soften on the exhale. Whatever has been done has been done. There's nothing we can do about that now. And whatever will be is completely out of our control. Lao Tzu once said, if you are living in the past, you are depressed. If you are living in the future, you're anxious. But if we're living in the now, we have peace. So throughout your day, catch yourself if you're going too far ahead or too far back. And ask yourself the question, does this serve you? I guarantee you it doesn't. This awareness of the mind, this paying attention and stepping outside of the mind and our thoughts, we understand that our thoughts are not us. We become the watcher and the observer of our thought and we come back to this moment, the present. Take a breath in. And a breath out. And just slowly from here, we can just bring ourselves up and we're actually going to tuck the toes under and we're going to stretch into the bottom of our feet and do some breath work here. So if this becomes too intense for the bottom of your feet, untuck your toes, but we'll try to stay here best we can. We're going to take an inhale, gather the arms above the head, and then just exhale, let the hands go down. Again, inhale, arms come up over the head. And exhale, let the hands come down. So the fascia and the connective tissue on the underside of our feet gets put in, our feet are in shoes too often these days. And what actually happens is that these guys, the fascia and connective tissue, they start to take over the role of the muscles. We have four layers of muscle in our feet and 33 joints and 27 bones. And 
when we stuff them in shoes all day, what actually happens is that they start to forget to move. They become very rigid and very stiff. And our feet and our hips are completely interlaced with each other. So if we're having problems upstream with our knees and also our hips and our lower back, we really need to look at what we're doing with our feet. Take two more breaths here. One more inhale. And an exhale. Untuck those toes and just let your, let your feet move around a little bit here. So we're just going to do a little bit of flossing in there on the ankles and the joints. Slowly moving your ankle one way, spreading your toes if you can, and slowly moving them the other way. Coming back down to your heels, this time we're going to work into really opening through the spine. So we're going to inhale, draw the sternum forward, and then exhale, come back to centre. Left hand goes down, inhale, and exhale back to centre. Other side, inhale. And exhale. Now inhale, interlace the hands and exhale, round the spine. From here, inhale, straight up. And exhale, let go. Hands come behind the back. Breathe in, open the chest. Breathe out, let go. Left hand down, inhale. And exhale, come back down. Other side, inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. Inhale, interlace the hands. Exhale, round the fingers. One more time. Inhale, hands lift up. And exhale, let that go. Hands behind, breathe in, pop the chest. Exhale, come back. Left hand down, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, hands together. And exhale, round. Inhale, straight up. And exhale, come onto your hands. Boo, boo, not in there. And then spreading your fingers really wide here, starting to just put a little bit of movement and fluidity into that spine. So working through your cow cats, you inhale, draw your chin and chest up. And as you exhale, round your spine. You can even choose to stay here, but I really like to make this really fluid and mobile. So allowing my body now to move side to side, forward, back, <laughs> whichever direction works for you. You might even really rock yourself forward. You might even find your way into a little opening into the chest. Um, I want you to be really creative with your spine here. And just find these movements that work for you. And in the next minute or so, I want you to close down your eyes. And I want you to find any movement that you can here that feels good through your body. I really like to tuck my toes under too sometimes and sit back to a crouch. And just play with what feels good. Sometimes even moving into one side can be really nice as well. Just exploring different phases of movement. Eventually bringing yourself back and we're going to keep those toes tucked under. And then from this space with the toes tucked under, we're going to pull the belly up and in. So we're feeling this anterior tilt of the pelvic bone here. Yep. And we're just going to engage that belly slightly. So I really want to feel the core turn on. And then with that core turn on, we're going to rock forward and back into the wrist. So fingers are spread really, really wide here. And really nice, strong, straight arms. And I want you to feel almost this external rotation into the shoulder joint. But try not to let the belly collapse and the lower back collapse here. So still keeping the core engaged, our molar bandha. Wrist mobility is so important, even though this will be a shorter practice today. It is super important to keep your wrist strong. Turn the fingertips out to the side. And now we can bring the heels of the hands in a little closer here together. And then just slowly 
moving yourself side to side. Everyone will look different with this. So again, drop out of what we think aesthetically it should look like. And then just come back to this space of feeling in the body. And if that felt okay, you can bring your fingertips back to face your knees. And same thing, we're just going to go forward and back here. I still have my toes tucked under, so I'm really, I'm in bare feet a lot. But again, if you wear shoes a lot, try to get out of your shoes as often as possible. Remember, we are not born for shoes. And if you look at a baby's foot, they're very wide at the top. Typical Westerners' feet, if they've been in shoes ever since they've been in kindergarten, are getting scrunched and pointed. If we put our hands in shoes, they'd be exactly the same thing. They'll become very rigid, very stiff. And we're going to have problems everywhere else in the body because that area is not getting space. Beautiful. From here, just bringing your hands back over, fingertips spreading wide. And then what we do from here is a little movement into the hips. So we're going to sink ourselves back over the heels. And we're just going to turn ourselves to the side and sit onto that right sit bone. So we're going to come back to sort of the hovered bear position and twist and turn and come and sit onto the left. So a lot of our spinal issues stem from twisting movements, right? So we'll bend down to pick up something in the shower, we'll get out of the car, we might be holding a baby in one hand or a shopping bag in another, and then my back goes. So it's again really important to move our body through these three planes of movement, our sagittal, our frontal and our transverse plane. The twisting is a big part of that. So if that's feeling okay, you can pick up the bottom foot and shoot the bottom through now. So starting to add a little bit more strength and fluidity into this movement. So just working through this hovered bear, left leg comes up, kicks through, flex the foot. Don't worry if you don't get this straight away, just stay with that little twist where we're at. And it's really important to understand there's no end goal in yoga. We're not striving towards anything, we're just Playing and moving and wherever you are is perfect. This is it. Be totally content and happy with exactly where you are. Otherwise, if you're always searching, you'll always be looking. Come back to that hovered bear position and we're going to hold here. Belly draws to spine and we're going to hold here for at least another 20 seconds. Breathe. Fingers spread wide. Knees hovering off the ground. And yes, you'll start to shake. Arms are straight, chin tucked in slightly, round the shoulders, 10. Three, two, and one. Take a moment, let's shake those wrists out, knees wide, bend the elbows. Ooh, and start to roll the wrist. You might notice you're quite warm already, like I am. And notice what's going on with your breath. Can you slow it down? So if you're aware of your ujjayi breath, it might be a good opportunity to bring that in, breathing in through the nose. Keeping the lips sealed, breathe out through the nose as if you're holding up a glass mirror. If you feel ready, if you need more rest, take it. Spread your fingers wide, tuck your toes, engage your core, and we're finding our first downward facing dog. So remember in your down dog, you do not have to have straight legs. I don't think I'll ever have straight legs in a downward facing dog. It's a lot to do with the compression in our ankle joint and of course the tightness and mobility into our hamstrings. So again, wherever you are is perfectly okay. Spread your fingers wide, this is your anchor, and then press your chest back towards your thighs. And move your dog here, wag your tails, like feel this movement left to right. You know, you don't be afraid to bend your knees and just play with how it feels in your body. From this downward facing dog, we're going to slowly, over eight counts, ripple through to a high plank. So slowly start to tuck your chin, start to move forward onto the ball of your feet. Belly draws to spine, ripple your spine all the way over into your first high plank. And then hold here, belly draws to spine, bum squeezes together. And we want to keep the hips almost as high as our shoulders here. So strong legs. Now tuck the chin and slowly ripple back. Slow as you can. One vertebrae at a time. To find your way to your down dog. Now similar sort of movement. This time I'm going to lift up the right foot. Inhale, ripple all the way through. 
Come to a high plank, knee draws to nose. Chin tucks in, ripple all the way back. Foot comes down, downward facing dog, and then on the left side, inhale, ripple all the way through, slowly coming through, round the shoulders, protract, knee to nose, pause, and then slowly come all the way back. Find your downward facing dog. Beautiful. From your downward facing dog, walk your hands back to your feet. So long and stretching out through those hamstrings. Take an inhale breath, find a halfway lift, belly to spine. And exhale, soften and fold. We do that two more times. Breathe in. And breathe out. And last one, breathe in. And breathe out. Walk your hands slowly back out, all the way. And again, come to find your downward facing dog. Ripple forward, find your way to your high plank again, belly draws to spine. Pausing here, so squeeze your glutes here, belly lifts in and up. Find that protraction here, shoulders possibly slightly forward than your wrist. Take a full breath in. And then on your exhale, slow the chaturanga, elbows up the side of the body, pause here. You can drop your knees at any point. And then from here, we're going to push all the way back up high plank, drop the knees down, sink the hips back, pull the elbows in, so keeping their shoulders externally rotated, slide ourselves all the way through and come all the way down to the ground. Bring the hands out to 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Breathe in, oscillating cobra pose. Breathe out, peel back down. I want you to feel your spine segment here. So inhale. And exhale. We're going to do three to four of these. Inhale. Find your depth, your movement. Exhale. I might go three more. It's just feeling really nice. Breathe in. more inhale and exhale and last time through inhale and exhale from here press your toes under and either push back to your knees or straight up to plank and some yoga knees today and then find our way back to down dog. So we're going to very much so focus on our hip and our spine today and keeping it pretty fluid with our movement, exploring all ranges of the hip. So right leg will lift, breathe in. And exhale, bend and open. And we're just going to do a hip circle here. So we're going to bring the right knee around and draw it over to the left side of the elbow or the wrist. You can drop that back knee at any time. The right knee to the right wrist. And then we go up and around and we draw like a figure of eight. We're going to do that one more time. Go as slow as you can, bringing that right knee out and around and over to the left wrist. It then sweeps to the right wrist. Up, over, and around. Now bring that right knee in towards the nose. And step the right foot somewhere near the right hand. Drop that left knee down. For a moment, pause here, open up that right knee and just explore the, the feeling into that right hip, the groin. We're right or wrong here, you're going to be afraid to move around the joint. From this space, come back to finding that low lunge and slowly push yourself up through that right heel. And bring the arms above the head, finding that low lunge on the asana, low lunge. Really push down through that right heel and you'll feel your hamstring and glute engage, fingers spread wide. Take a full breath in and then exhale, maybe open the heart. And again, breathe in, let those arms come up. As you exhale, feel free to use your block here if you need to. We're going to push through that right foot. We're going to find our pyramid pose. So if you need to, please rest your hands onto a block. If not, inhale. Open the chest and exhale, fold forward. So a great idea is these water bottles too. If you don't have a block, it will help you find length here with a nice flat back. My hamstrings are actually quite tight today, so I'm actually going to stay here using my bottle as a block. 
I'm placing my back heel down into the floor. My back foot is on a slight angle, so pressing back into the blade edge of the back foot. My right hip is drawing back and left hip drawing forward. Breathe. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. From here, re-bend back into that right knee. And again, you can use your block if you need to. We're going to lift up that back leg and we're going to push the heel away. So we're not going any higher than the hip joint here. So keep pulling that left hip down and the right hip and the left hip are in one line. So warrior three prep. So keep pushing back with that left heel, nice and strong through the glutes here. Belly draws to spine, trying to keep a flat back. If you need to use a water bottle here, then feel free to do so. Take a full breath in. As you exhale, we're gonna bend that right knee and step that left foot all the way back to the back of the mat. Walk your hands all the way around, straighten the right leg, and then just find your way into a Cossack squat. All right, so we're gonna keep it high for this one. I want you to engage that um, right quadricep so much that you feel the kneecap lift. You can stay upright here. Your hands can support you on the ground if you need. Try to come out of your left toes. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then slowly from here, start to bend that right knee and just allow yourself to now shift yourself into a high crescent lunge. So you're on your back to be toes. The toes are filming online, hey? So finding our way to our crescent lunge. Now, I really like to drop that back knee down a little bit. It gives me some space in my lumbar spine. Some people like to straighten the leg. I like to come into a double bent lunge. I'm gonna leave that up to you. Take a full breath in, bring the arms up above the head. And again, we're gonna bring in a twist, left arm forward, right arm back. You feel this delicious twist through the body here. Breathe. Windmill your way all the way up and around. We're briefly coming to find ourselves in a warrior two. We're going to inhale, draw the hands together, and then exhale, just sweep the right arm underneath. And we're coming to find this rainbow warrior. Breathe in, sweep the arm up and around, warrior two. Exhale, breathe out, sweep yourself back around, rainbow warrior. So just a little bit of movement here. One more time as you're Inhale to come all the way out and around. Exhale, warrior two. Last time through. Breathing in and exhale, your rainbow warrior. From here, we're going to move all the way into an aeroplane pose. So move really fluidly, turn your right foot forward. Try not to segment too much of the movement. Lift up your back foot and then find your way into aeroplane. And then on the inhale, we're going to lift up that left knee. We're going to create a little movement here through the hip. Exhale, the knee goes out to the side. And then we're going to start to move that back foot behind us, coming into a bit of a driving squat. So inhale, sweep that leg all the way back and around. And then exhale, hold the knee to the chest. So inhale, leg goes all the way out and around. Exhale, maybe try to keep the toe off the ground. Squeeze the inner thighs in together, drive and squat. Inhale, start to pick the leg all the way up around. Explore the mobility and movement into the hip. And exhale, hover the knee. One more time. Inhale, come all the way out and around. And this time, we're actually going to leave that blade edge of the back foot down. As you slide that back foot out, left hand now comes down. Right hand lifts up and we stretch through the piriformis and the outer hip. It's a beautiful space to be. Breathe. Mm, continue to push out of that right heel. Take a full breath in. And as you exhale, we're going to push through that right heel. Slowly bring that left foot all the way back to the back of the mat. And we're coming now to find our dragon lunge. So right hand on the inside of that right foot. Feel free to, again, have a little bit of play with movement here and breathe. Now from this space, we're going to lift up that right hand, bring the right hand forward, and push through that right heel, lift the knee to the nose, pause here, flex the foot, and push that left foot all the way through, maybe catching that left toe, or for a little bit more core work, continue to lift up that left toe towards that right hand. Take a full breath in, and then slowly, 
come all the way down to the ground and bringing both legs up here, reaching your hands towards your toes. I'm just going to work a few little crunches here. You're working in touching your toes, maybe flexing your feet. So heels push up towards that ceiling. We're going to go for eight more of these. For seven. For six. For five. For four. For three. For two. And for one. Start to re-bend back into that right foot. And then as we come up, we're going to then place that right foot down into the ground. Left hand comes down, back where we were, pull that belly to the spine. Slowly bring that left foot all the way back through, finding your way back to your lunge shape. Take a full breath in, open the heart. And as you exhale, push into the hands, step back down with facing dog. Inhale, ripple forward, find your way to a high plank. Optional vinyasa here. Exhale, elbows wrap in, belly to spine, just to elbow height. Breathe in, cobra or up dog. Breathe out, down dog. Beautiful. From your downward facing dog, left leg will lift, inhale and exhale, bend and open. And we're going to move those hip circles now on the left. So start to bring that left knee out to the side. Start to twist through your body, left over to the right, from right to the left, up and over. And just working your range here. Take your time. We're looking for any areas that are clunky or stiff or rigid. Move slow. Beautiful. And then from here, we're just going to bring that left knee all the way into the nose. Step the left foot somewhere near the left hand. Drop that right knee down and pause. So just exploring again that left hip now, a little bit of fluidity into that hip. So slow, listen to what it's telling you here. And from that space, gently press down through that left heel. And we're just going to lift up and find our way into that pyramid pose. So just pause here, notice how this feels. Just gently and slightly doing that left hip back and the right hip forward. You'd actually forget that low lunge. So just drop your back knee back down, press through that left heel, and then slowly bring yourself up into that low lunge, breathing in the hands lift. And breathe out, maybe open the chest. Beautiful. From here, we'll take it into that warrior three prep. So pushing down through that left heel, let's move myself back a bit, and then start to lift up that back leg. We're coming to find that warrior three prep. We're not going to go too high with that back foot. We're going to flex that foot. Remember, you can rest your hands onto a block if you need to, but continue to pull the belly to the spine. The shoulder blades are drawing back here. Three. Take a breath in. As you exhale, bend into that left knee. Bring your right foot to the back of the mat. Spin yourself to the right. And we're finding that high cross out squat here. So we're actually going to engage the leg. We're going to squeeze that left quad. And the right knee is tracking that over the right ankle here. Lift up your right toes. Breathe. Push through that right foot. Slowly swivel yourself around. Take your time. Feel. You're going to bring your left foot forward, back to the toes of the right foot. And we find our way to that high lunge. So I'm doing the asana. Bend that back knee down if you need. Breathe in. Breathe out. Take another breath in. And as you exhale, right arm forward, left arm back, we twist. Try not to hook in too much with those left toes. Warrior two, press through the left foot. 
Start to make your way into your Vira 2, blade edge of back foot down. Take a full breath in and an exhale. Now inhale, start to move yourself, so move through your squat and we start to work into that side rainbow warrior using the breath in to open up and the exhale brings you back down. Inhale lifts you up, exhale warrior two. Full breath in, exhale takes you down. Inhale rainbow warrior, be really nice and fluid with this one. And just moving now with your own breath, you don't need a cue. Find where you need to be, one more full round. Last time we'll end up in our warrior two. Feeling here into that warrior. Good, taking a moment here just to settle. Notice how this feels. And from this space, we're going to shift into our aeroplane. So I'm just gonna move back a little bit. Take the time to swivel yourself around. Lift off that back foot. Find your aeroplane pose for a moment. Now inhale the right knee up into the chest. And we're gonna add in that hip mobility here. Pause for a moment, feel your breath. Inhale, the right knee goes out to the side and exhale goes around and either touch the toe down or keep it off, squeeze the inner thighs and find a dragon squat. Breathe in, the leg lifts behind and exhale, slowly bring that knee back and around, really exploring our hips here. Breathe in, knee goes out and around, opening right through the hip joint. Exhale, find that dragon squat, inner thighs squeeze, bend as much as you like into that left side. Really work strength here, inhale slowly. Come all the way up and exhale forwards. One more time, inhale, leg goes out and around. And as you exhale, this time that foot's gonna continue to go out to the left, blade edge of the right foot, right hand comes down and we twist open here, it's one of my favorite spaces. Breathe. Take a breath in. As you exhale, start to press through that left foot. Slowly bring that right foot all the way back here. We're finding our way to our dragon lunge. Left hand on the inside of that left foot and pause. A little bit of movement here can feel really nice. And then engage through the belly, bring the left hand forward, round the spine, lean forward, pick up your right knee, round your spine, use your core, and start to push that right heel forward, and then really crunching yourself into a little ball here, You'll catch your toe if you want to, whatever works for you here, breathe, take one more breath, and slowly come all the way down to the ground, this time coming into a hollow body hold, chin off chest, Knees stacking above your hips, arms are open here, and we're just going to rock every single different direction rather than just forward and back. When you play with going to your side, so the hips might swivel a bit here. Try to keep those knees above the hips, and I can't particularly talk here. We're going to go for another 30 seconds. Just playing side to side. Get ourselves out of this rigid linear movement, playing different directions. 10 seconds. Beautiful. Give your knees a squeeze for a moment. Pause here. Take a breath in. Beautiful. Bend that left knee. Flex the right foot. Slowly come up. And we're going to again push in here. We want to bring that right hand down. Feel the stability here, reach to try and touch your toe. Bring that knee in all the way to the nose. Step the right foot back. Come to find that low lunge position. Take a full breath in, open the heart. Exhale, step back, down and facing dog. And then from here, we're going to inhale, ripple forward, come to high plank. And then we're going to start to move into our side plank. Right hand goes down, left hand comes up. Inhale into your side plank, legs are squeezed. Lift up your top hip here, you can always drop that back knee down. Take one more breath. As you exhale, bring that left hand down. Continue to spin open as that right leg lifts. We make our way into our wild thing. Take your time, 
Right toes finally find the floor. Lift up the hips, open up the spine. Breathe in. Breathe out. Slowly, looking down, bring yourself all the way back. Listen up here. We're going to bring the right forearm down to the floor. We're keeping the external rotation of that right shoulder. So wrist and forearm in line. And then side plank on our forearms, either left hand down, or a play, we bring that left hand up. Now, the reason I've got my fingers facing forward here instead of turning inwards is so that we open up the shoulder joint and work on that external rotation, which in the world we're in today, we have too much internal rotation in our shoulders from phones and devices, it can be quite intense. Slowly bring that right hand down, both forearms on the floor, coming to forearm plank, breathe. Squeeze your bum, belly lifts to spine. We're not here for too long. Take a breath in, and then slowly lower your hips down, Sphinx Pose. Woo. Breathe in. Breathe out, let that go. Three more breaths. Breathe in. Breathe out. From here, come all the way down to the ground. And then engaging through your core, bring your hands by the side of the chest. You can either push up to high plank, but before you do, if you do that, engage your quads, wrap the elbows in, belly lift, push straight up, or you can always push back to your knees, downward facing dog. Well done, everyone. Take a few breaths here in your down dog. Notice how this feels. Let your head be heavy, relax. Ripple forward, find your high plank. Last time through your left hand down, spin in your heels, your right hand lifts. Come to find your side plank, Vashi Sasana. Lift this right hip up towards the ceiling. Like there's a magnet on that right hip and you'll feel compression in the left waist. Take a full breath in. Slowly bring that right hand down. Do this super slow. Left leg lifts. Ground down to that right hand. Start to spin yourself open. Slowly make your way over and up into your version of wild thing. Breathe in. Breathe out. Slowly, again, take your time. Feel the transitions. Bring your left forearm down to the floor. Fingers face forward. Coming to find your side plank on the left on your forearm. Keep your right hand there for balance. If this is quite new to you, stay there so that the shoulder is supported. If you want more, be gentle and mindful as that right arm lifts. Breathe in. Breathe out. Slowly bring that right hand down. Coming to find our dolphin for the last time here. And we're just going to do some hip tilts here to the right and to the left. To the right. And to the left. We'll go one more time to the right. Oh, and to the left. Take a breath in. And then as you exhale, goodness, those hips drop down. Sphinx pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Opportunity, if it's there for you to come up into seal, breathe in. Don't force it if it's not, breathe out. Come all the way down to the ground and we're going to do our twist line down this way today. We're going to do the scorpion and bring the left arm up to the side. Right fingertips on the ground and just start to roll. Bringing that right leg all the way up and around as we twist through our spine and open up through the left side of the chest. Some of you might like to lift up that right arm and come into a bind, but don't make it and force it if it's not there. Lift up that right arm if it's in a bind, bring it all the way back down. Take your time to come back to the center. Bring that right arm out to the side. Start to swivel yourself up and around. 
listen to what this feels like in your body. It's a lovely way to twist, but also open up through the shoulder joint if it's there, that left hand come up and around. Ido Portal says, if we don't move, then one day we may not be able to. Allow yourselves to explore every single part of your body. Get curious about movement. Get curious about what you can do, how you can play every single day. Start to unravel, bring yourself back down to the centre. And then just flop yourselves over into your back. I really encourage you to take a little bit longer in your Shavasana. Um, I do have somewhere to go after this, so this is important. So I'm going to be here for a little while, but if you need longer, please stay. As you arrive in your Shavasana, take a full breath in. And a full breath out. And let your whole body just melt down into the floor. Try not to rush off after this. Enjoy the space. Kim said for when it is quiet, we are able to listen. Too often we're trying to cram in the stuff because we don't want to feel. When we're quiet, things come up and it gets awkward and uncomfortable. And we suppress it and we put it back down. But the more we suppress our feelings and our emotions and our samskaras, that's what they're called, impressions that we've stored, the more they're just going to come up later when it's inappropriate or they're not welcome. So when they're ready to come up, let them come up and fill them with compassion, with kindness, and a sense of curiosity and ask those feelings and emotions, thank you for showing up. What are you here to teach me? What can I learn? If you need a little longer, please stay. You can't start to engage with your pose if you get a stick in your breath. You have a choice right now <clears throat> to move about your day with a, a, a new sense of light, a, a new sense of awareness, remembering that whatever goes on in our mind as in a thought, is a vibration from our heart. So when we do have a thought and it's unpleasant or unkind, we need to ask ourselves, what is it that my heart needs? We need a bit of self-love, self-nurturing, self-care, pausing. And we need to honour our heart in order for our thoughts to be kind, compassionate and grateful. So we bend one knee and then the other, give yourself a little hug, say thank you. Thank you to your physical body. It is an amazing vehicle that allows you to do all this stuff, to move, to breathe, to play. And more importantly, right now, because this is the only moment that matters, to go and do something for you or something for somebody else. So appreciate, appreciate, appreciate exactly where it is that you are. Take your time to come up to seated, however that is for you. And just take a moment here to catch your breath. Your hands can be on your knees or wherever is comfortable. <sighs> take a huge breath in. And a huge breath out. And I want you to take a moment here today to notice how you can watch your language today. Watch the words that you speak to yourself. Do you speak around others or the words that your kids may hear you say? How is your internal dialogue? I mean, if it is a dialogue that doesn't lift you up, it doesn't serve you, then ask yourself the question, how long am I going to choose to talk to myself like that for? Because we all have a choice. We will very easily go back to what we know. But when we become aware of the words we speak and the thoughts we think, if we are slowed down enough and we pause, we have an opportunity to interrupt the pattern. 
And it's in that moment when we interrupt the pattern that we have the choice to choose again. And that is up to you. So breathe in and give yourself a sense of compassion and kindness. And remember that this is it. Exactly where you are right now is more than enough. It's not when you have a certain body. It's not when you make enough money. It's not when you have a boyfriend or a house or whatever it is that you keep striving for. It's none of that. It's actually right here. And it's already there. So when we realize that this is it, our body, the way it is right now, we just go, you know what? I'm so proud of that. How can I serve you? How can I help you more? We then take the pressure off. Take a full breath in. And a full breath out, exhale. Namaste. Tribe, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you had fun in that flow. I'm actually releasing uh, some of my Watch Your Language uh, workshops very soon. Um, I will be looking to do some online ones as well, but uh, for now there will be a workshop in Milton in the South Coast, uh, in Newcastle in October, and also the Central Coast. So super looking forward to that. Uh, they're all workshops based on my book, Watch Your Language. I've also recently updated my website as well. Um, so feel free to go on there. It's www.watchyalanguage.com. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you as well. So if you are interested to work with me, um, then please just send me an email or comment below. If you enjoyed this practice and flow, again, send me a little comment down there in the comments. So let me know what you enjoyed or what you'd like to see more of. So namaste.